Hi there, I'm Lucas Martel. I am the writer-director of 57 North, which is a branching narrative game. Uh, and today I'm just going to show you how you can write your own interactive stories. Uh, so when I'm doing these branching narrative games, I use Twine. It's free, it's open source. Uh, to get it, just go to twinery.org. Um, and then you can either use it just directly online or you can download it. And the cool thing is, is that Twine works with just these very simple HTML files. And I'm going to put the Twine file for 57 North on our webpage, uh, mightycoconut.com slash 57 North. Um, so once you download that HTML file, you can just double click it to open it in your browser. Um, and that will allow you to actually play the text only version of the game. Uh, so this is basically like playing the script of the game. This is what we wrote first, um, and then after this was done is when we did all the visuals, all the sound and music and narration and that sort of things. Uh, so, as you see, you could just go through. There is actually a little back button. That's a feature that we actually intentionally did not allow in the game. Um, but it's really useful, like I said, as you are sending this around because it allowed us to let a couple of people play through the game before we had even made the game itself with all of the visuals. Um, now, the other cool thing that you can do with that HTML file that I gave you um, is if you open up Twine, just go to Import from File, choose that HTML file, and then you can actually go in and see exactly how it was made. This is basically how we edit any of these scripts. Um, so here we basically have uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, four. Um, this really long one is chapter five. It's a very intense one. Um, and then six is the epilogue. So this is the entire game all in a single twine file. In total, 57 North is about uh, 15,000 words. Uh, when you're playing the full version, it takes a, about an hour, um, but you could probably, depending on how fast you read, you could probably play the text-only version um, quicker than that. So let me actually show you, before I get too deep into uh, some of these pages, let me actually show you how you can start uh, creating your own very simple game. Um, I'm just going to hit this new story button and we'll just call this test six. Okay, so it starts off with a single passage. I also call them page. Um, and uh, let me just double click that to edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a link to the next one. So we're just going to do this as sort of start the game. Um, and what I did is that I put that inside squ two square brackets. Um, to open it and close it. And now when I close that out, you will see that it's created a new passage called Start the Game. So if I hit the play button, you see that now we just have that single, basically a hyperlink that we can click. Um, now, when we get to the next one, let's actually add a couple of these. So let's say choose an option. And notice that I didn't put that in brackets because this is the text that we actually want people to read. And then we'll put the options down here. So option one and close that. Um, and then one other thing that I will show you because this is how I did everything in 57 North. Um, I'm going to do option two, but I'm gonna add one other thing. I'm going to put a vertical line, which is a pipe. Um, it is the key that is right above the return key, at least on my US keyboard. Um, and then in here, I'm gonna say page name. Um, and what that allows you to do is that sometimes you want the text to be different than what you're actually calling that page, and that allows you to do it. The first part is what is shown on screen. The second one is just something internally that shows up. Um, so you'll notice that that second one is actually called page name. Um, and now if I play it one more time, we can start the game. And then you see how that still shows option two as opposed to page name in there. Um, so that's basically it. Um, that's the most powerful thing that you can do within Twine that allows you to create some pretty robust stories just um, with that one very, very basic command. Um, now, if you want to get a little deeper, you want to see how 57 North was made. Um, let me open it up here. Uh, the best thing that you can do is just go in and start poking around, see how we did things, see uh, see. Uh, what decisions had big impacts throughout the rest of the story. You can follow the flowchart and see where um, all of those different uh, decisions played out. Um, and then we did actually use a couple of other commands. We 
kept it very basic. If you want to get really powerful with Twine, there is some great documentation uh, that is on twinery.org and you can see all sorts of other commands. Um, I'll point out just ch1, by the way, we use that, uh, that key for chapter one underscore and then we had three digits that represented our page numbers and we did that because it made it much easier to keep things um, streamlined down the road and kind of part of our pipeline for creating the art um, so that's why we did that um, but what you'll notice is that on one of these um, passages here we have another command um, open parentheses set colon and then this saved boat so the dollar sign means that that's a variable and we're setting this variable to one that means that once you play through, it's going to remember that decision so that, that decision can come in later on. So for instance, that comes into play um, on this passage right here, chapter 2, 10. And in this one, you can see we have the one other main command that we use, which is just a simple if else statement. So if that variable saved boat is one, then it displays this option, look for Caleb, and it links to chapter 2, 0, 20. But if saved boat is not one with this else statement, then it will continue to chapter 2040. So that's just one way that you can add a little bit more um, robustness to your stories if you're wanting to. But like I said, you don't even have to do that. You can do everything with just very, very basic links and you can tell some really compelling stories that way. Um, so anyways, like I said, download the HTML file at mightycoconut.com slash 57 north. Uh, check it out, poke at it, see how we did everything. Um, I'm going to try to do a few more of these videos, getting less on the technical side and more into the writing side and how we're trying to create decisions that have an impact on the viewer and uh, choosing structures and some narrative things. Um, just to try to make it as good of a story as possible. So subscribe to the channel uh, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.